the FDA is, is basically Food and Drug Administration. This is uh, a federal agency which we're looking to to tell us what's safe that we can consume and it should be helpful, not should be, and it shouldn't be harmful, if you will. So we have that. The FDA's got to change their whole approach to this product and how it affects our lives and the extended effects it has in communities and the economy. The most trusted person outside of our family is our doctor, our physicians. And when they say, take this, it'll help you. And here, I'll give you a 90 day supply of it. Because up until last year, Vicodin and Lortab, the most, the most prescribed opiates were basically Schedule 3. Schedule 3 means 90 days or more. You don't have to call, you just keep calling it like M&Ms were giving them out. I was uh, approached to become the thread director for addiction and pain management, which means I was, one, it shows dedication at the level of the curriculum committee in the school, but two, that affords me time to kind of audit the curriculum from the first through to the fourth year um, and make sure that appropriate concepts regarding pain management and addiction treatment are introduced at the right times, the right places, that build upon each other, avoiding kind of, you know, making sure it's relevant and decreasing redundancy. In addition, the office will work with the Substance Abuse Task Force on various educational programs that are being planned for helping other professionals uh, prepare for this addiction uh, crisis. Now, as a faculty member in the Department of Medicine here, I've worked with the Milan Pushtar Health Right for many years, and I'd like to recognize the work of Health Right and those who are involved, especially Laura Jones and Dr. George Record and others. Um, they established a harm reduction program here at HealthRight. It's one of the first, if not the first, in the state of West Virginia. It's a syringe exchange program that serves a great need in our area. I checked to see how many clients there are so far, and there's over 600 clients participate in that program, which also is a link to care, hopefully, for their addiction. I moved to West Virginia last year from Los Angeles, and I was faced very quickly with the harsh reality of a lack of resources. Um, I, through a great series of events, managed to find contact information for Kathy Ura, who's the director of WVU's Collegiate Recovery Program. Stand up, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and for the past year, I've been working with her and countless others, uh, trying to develop recovery resources for students on campus. I'm in long-term recovery for an eating disorder. And when I moved to West Virginia, I didn't have any resources um, and I did some research and I found the Association of Recovery and Higher Education and um, they do collegiate recovery programs and WVU was listed as having one. So I reached out to Kathy Ura who's the director of the program and I said, you know, I'm new to the area, um, I, don't, I don't know what to do, I don't know anyone in recovery here. I don't have access to resources. Um, I need some support. And she said, come on down, and we're just getting going. And so I've been working with them for the past year. Um, you know, like I said, I'm the first student member with them. We've got people come that are involved uh, with different addictions, some substance use disorders, alcoholism, um, because, you know, addiction touches us all in different ways. Um, but I think that recovery is similar and for me a really important element is the social support. You know, it's been proven through research that having that sort of group bond and knowing that you're not the only person going through this is really important for long-term recovery. Okay, so I'm a fourth year pharmacy student um, at the uh, pharmacy school here. And we've provided a tremendous amount of education uh, within the past two years that I've uh, been on a chair called Generation Rx. And what Generation Rx does is it provides education about addiction and mental health and substance abuse to our community. And what I've done with it is we've done three health fairs down in McDowell County, uh, which I don't know if anybody has read the New York Times article that came out several years ago about it being the poorest and most addicted county in West Virginia. So we've brought education and um, toothbrushes and everything that you can imagine down there to those people. Uh, the school has also done several radio announcements during American Pharmacist Month, which is October, uh, about substance abuse and mental health and educating the Morgantown area about addiction as a disease. 
And I've also gotten several speakers to speak to the School of Pharmacy on their recovery, and those people being pharmacists, to let our students know that pharmacists also suffer from addiction. And last October, we also held a candlelight vigil in remembrance of those who have lost to their addiction and in celebration of those who are still fighting for their recovery. I, along with three of my classmates, got to work on a community service project this semester. Taylor Croft, Lucas Biglianco, Cody Wells, and I decided to promote the American Physical Therapy Association's campaign called Choose PT. The goal of Choose PT is to promote awareness and education to the general public and medical community on what exactly a physical therapist's role in the chronic pain picture really is. So when we, as physical therapists, see patients, we get to identify each unique movement pattern that they present with. They often have deficits in certain ranges and oftentimes a compensation for those deficits. We, as physical therapists, treat those things and can address their functional limitations without actually giving anything to mask that pain. Together, prescription opiates and heroin, both together, have killed 250,579 Americans since 1999. These are just overwhelming. Now in West Virginia, we have the highest drug overdose mortality rate in the United States. As I said, our drug overdose deaths in West Virginia have soared by more than 600% since 1999. We lost 627 West Virginians to opiates last year alone. In 2013, we lost 570. 61,000 West Virginians use prescription pain medication for non-medical purposes in 2014.